Pretty excited. 9.50 and it's on already. We managed to get the Gondi up a little bit earlier. It's looking like a mega day. It's one of the longest days of the year. It's the 5th of January. We've had overcast skies for the last three days. It's been super stable and finally the clouds have parted and the sun has come through. It's hopefully gonna be a big flight. But right, we're gonna get ready and go, I think, because it looks on. Oh, we are off. Half 10, trying to go big. I just got nailed in sync after launch there, so we're gonna have to climb back up, but the cloud's not very high anyway, so. Six thousand feet, climbing up the side of the cloud. This seems to be a classic move for the first move in the convergence just behind the summit. So I just wanted to pause here for a second to explain what's going on and why I'm able to climb up above the cloud here. So you've got the cooler air mass to the right, and that's getting the east face thermals that are rising up to form this lower cloud and then on the left you've got the westerly wind that's coming in and converging and pushing over the top of this cloud and that's why you've got a second cloud base up on this red line here which I'm able to climb up to so in theory if I stay in this yellow area I should be able to continue to climb up above the cloud Getting a little bit stuck here on Northern Soho. Still quite early in the day. Here I managed to saw the valley wind in the shade just high enough that I can pass through the saddle. So here you can see that I've got a decent amount of ground speed passing along this ridge as I've got the wind behind me. Um, I'm desperately trying to scratch my way round into the sunny lee side. This is a west face and I'm getting southerly wind coming down. And you notice as I push around this corner to get onto the east face, I actually start getting a bit of headwind. And that's the thermic breeze coming up the sunny side. And it gets quite rough on this ridge as that thermic air converges with that wind that's coming down the other side. Once I get around the corner, it is rough, but it is going up. Once I climb high enough that I'm above the ridge, it becomes more pleasant. Oh, that was pretty wild. I nipped through that little saddle down there and uh, flew through the lee. Got lots of sink on the west side. Managed to nip around onto the east and got this horrific climb. And I've just kind of been pushing up the ridge. I've got quite a bit of wind up here actually. And it looks like I'm running into a dead end. The cloud's really low ahead. I don't know what to do here. Might have to hang out on Knuckle Peak for a bit and wait for conditions to improve. Um, yeah, the clouds look really low. And I'm parked. I've got seven kilometers an hour ground speed was the worst there. If you look at the cloud shadow, you can see that the wind is coming from the south here and I'm getting the climb out of the lee side of that ridge. Because I came in above it, I'm able to get the climb out of the lee without being exposed to the rotor lower down. Once I get up to cloud base, I'm able to saw the windward side of the cloud before tearing off downwind. After I round this corner, even though I'm able to dynamically saw the west facing side of this ridge, I don't turn until I get above the top of the ridge line where the climb is more established. As you're watching the hyperlapse, pay attention to the cloud shadow on the left. That's giving us a good indication of the wind strength and direction at the cloud level. 
I just managed to soar up in the shade here enough that I could pass through this gap onto the sunny east face. All right, three. All right, I'm on Coromandel Peak, which is just north of Roy's Peak. And I need to climb up here before trying to tackle the flats. It's midday. So we made Roy's Peak in good, good time. I'm on the sunny face now. Cloud base is quite low. It's going to be quite tricky crossing the flats, I think. So I'm on Roy's Peak and I'm just kind of waiting around, hoping that the cloud base is going to get higher, but... I don't know, it doesn't seem like it's changing much at the moment. I've been here for 20 minutes, so maybe you should give it a bit longer, but I'm getting impatient. But I don't really want to leave Roy's Peak at 5,000 feet. Seems a bit low. <laughs> but it kind of seems a shame because I took off so early, but the flats is going to be hard. And I'd rather do it a couple of thousand feet higher. So I'm nearly at 6,000 feet and I'm climbing up the side of the cloud. And this is a, a technique that I've used a couple of times today that seems to be working quite well, which is taking the climb and thermaling up to the, the west facing side of the cloud, which has the wind, and then climbing up the side of it. And uh, I think the thermic air is coming up on the east face, meeting the westerly wind and then converging. And it's, it's meaning I can get some more altitude out of the out of the cloud so I'm nearly at six grand I might give it a punt from here I'm gonna have to the only problem is I want to fly down wind so I've got to go around the cloud but I might give it a crack I just lost 100 feet talking Was a pretty low save. I'm not out the woods yet, but I was below the summit of Mount Iron. Nice cloud above. And then there's no clouds ahead, so I need to decide if I go to Maud or I go straight across. Climbing up on Mount Maud, I've survived across the flats. I'm gonna be climbing up on the summit and then transitioning across Lake Harweir and over to Breast Peak. 7,200 feet and I'm gliding over. I'm going for Breast Peak. Should have plenty of height to get there now. So I'm pretty much at base on the western end of Timaru Creek and there's good clouds ahead. Don't think there'll be much turning for the next next while hopefully. And I'll just uh, ride around the clouds and we'll see what it looks like when I get to the end but it might be better off not going too close to the divide because the clouds are looking pretty beefy in there and was forecast over development later so Let's just slow it down for a second so that it's easier to spot the convergence. Can you see that there's a step here in the cloud? That's because you've got a cooler easterly wind converging and meeting with the westerly wind. The air on the west of this line is rising smoothly and consistently and there isn't any need to turn.
So there's a gap here in the convergence, but you can see that on the other side it does continue further to the north. However, I take the opportunity here to turn and fly downwind. So I'm leaving the Timaru Creek convergence and I'm heading straight west. Uh, the clouds are looking big further north, so this is my strategy to avoid getting rained on. Um, I'm hoping I can get to the flats in time for the sea breeze convergence, but yeah, we'll see. I'll see what it looks like when I get to the other side. Pretty cool flying in between the clouds though. If you enjoyed the video, you can support the channel by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to see more videos like this. So, that's a Marimo over there. Lake Ohau, and I'm crossing the Ahuriri uh, River right at the bottom, actually. And I'm gonna go over to Magic Mountain and I'm gonna have a crack at this flatland flying that I don't do very often. Um, it does look flyable up through the main divide, but the clouds are looking pretty dark at the moment and there is forecast over development and it looks good out in the flats and so yeah and i've never flown up through the flats here well not not to tekapo so that's the plan at the moment is to try and have a crack at the flats and see if i can make it to tekapo I actually made a mistake here taking this climb as high as I did because I end up getting boxed in by the cloud. It keeps forming and I was hoping that I could fly around this one, but I actually ended up having to do some spirals so that I could then pass underneath it. Oh, I had to do a bit of spiraling to stay out the cloud there. Uh, 9,000 feet now. Nine and a half is too high, I've decided. It especially makes me a bit peaky with all these sailplanes flying around. I've got on a, a radio and I've made contact, so it looks good ahead. I'm gonna go do some cloud chasing. I'm approaching Twizel and I feel like I'm getting a bit low here. I haven't had a decent climb since I left Magic. It's been quite frustrating. So I'm really hoping I can get a good thermal here, but yeah, I'm about 1500 feet above the ground. Might be the end of the road. What a flight. <laughs> that was hard work. Shame, I would love to try to fly down the flats would have been good. flight shame at the end was just so hard that was really uh, really hard work at times that was not an easy flight i've flown queenstown to wanaka pretty low before but that i think that one was the lowest only the east faces were working but we had westerly wind so like you kind of had to fly into the lee a lot and i managed to climb up the side of the cloud in the convergence a few times and then the flats was really hard i left roy's peak at about just just under six thousand feet it was like five seven so super low, only just arrived to Mount Iron and I got a climb below the summit of Mount Iron. I was getting ready to land. The only easy part of the flight was flying up Timuru Creek. Um, didn't have to do much turning through there. And then I got to Magic Mountain and almost went in the cloud at nine and a half thousand feet and had to spiral out. And then coming across the flats here was just really hard work. I mean, I probably made it about 
another 35k but i didn't get a single decent climb out in the flats which was kind of frustrating like it was just all this broken crap lift so i kept pushing and then eventually i landed here which is i'm um, just about two kilometers short of twizel yeah make youtube videos you should um check them out subscribe you're not going to subscribe are you